Hello, welcome back students. And for those of you who guys um, are looking for a bit of help when it comes to matrices and row reduction, you have come to the right place. Sit back, relax, and just take a breath. And you're gonna understand row reduction finally. So I'm sure you've had a class or two where you've encountered matrices and the words echelon form. So the first thing we want to begin with is uh, exactly um, clarifying our minds as to what <laughs> echelon form looks like. And on screen, you can see that when you're dealing with echelon form, it's obviously a matrix. Uh, but there are two key features to this echelon form type matrix. And one of the first key features is that our leading diagonal must always have values of ones or should be only ones. That's your first point. And your second point is that all of your values below your leading diagonal should only be zeros. And essentially, that's it. In a nutshell, as easy as that, two points. Your leading diagonal should only be ones and below that leading diagonal should be zeros. The values X, Y, and Z can be any number. It really doesn't matter. Echelon form just considers uh, what's along that diagonal as well as what's below. So let's look at a question and see how we can apply uh, the reduction. Now, consider we have this matrix. Now, this A matrix is a three by three matrix. And um, they're asking us to reduce this matrix to echelon form. So now, because we know what echelon form looks like, you guys should understand that all they want is for our numbers and our diagonal to be all ones, as well as all of the values below that leading diagonal to be all zeros. And this is the part where row reduction takes place. So we know what we're working towards achieving, but how do we achieve that? Well, we need to take steps to reduce our rows. So what I have done here is I have simply uh, written the names of each of our rows. We have row one, row two, and row three written horizontally. And what I'm going to attempt to do is use my four operations to reduce my rows. Now, let's look at an example here. I am going to consider row two. And what am I going to do with row two? Well, just catching my eye is row one, which has values two, one negative one. So I'm thinking if my row two had values starting with two, maybe I could perform a subtraction and convert that uh, first element in row two to zero, perhaps. So let's try it. First thing we need to do is multiply that second row by two, and then we could subtract row one. Doing this, we will get Two. Row two has values one, one, four. Subtract row one has values two, one, negative one. A quick cleanup will give us two. Two and four by two is eight, just distributing my brackets. And we have two, one, negative one. And that gives us, remember when you are subtracting matrices, you make sure you subtract the elements that belong to the same location. So we'd have two subtract two, that gives us zero. You'd have two subtract one, that gives us one. And also you'd have eight subtract negative one, that gives us nine. So that's a zero, one, nine. So then what you can do is you can now rewrite your new matrix. So a new matrix would look like this. After that first row reduction, we have converted row two. Because row two is the only matrix we converted, all other rows stay the same. 
and we can rewrite our newly converted matrix using our new values after row reduction. Sometimes uh, you can perform two, two or more row reductions because some persons can work faster, some students tend to take a little while to get the hang of it. Uh, whatever is your skill level, just be very careful because it's easy to make mistakes when you are doing row reduction. So my second step towards my achieving all ones in my diagonal and all zeros below it is to play around a bit with row three. So let's look at row three this time. So what can we do with row three? How about we multiply uh, row three by two and we can also subtract three times row one. Now, for those of you who are wondering, how am I going to figure this out? Just take note that you can perform any step that you want when you are doing row reduction. Uh, you could have found half of row one. Uh, you could have found a third of row three. Uh, whatever it takes to achieve those values of zeros and ones uh, would be a legal move once you make sure to apply it across the entire row. So let's see what's happening here if we were to attempt to multiply row 3 by 2. So row 3 has values 3, 1, 2. And then we want to subtract 3 by row 1. What will we get? Well, that's uh, 6. 2 by 1 is 2, 2 2 is a 4, subtract 3 2 is a 6, 3 and negative 3. Uh, for those of you who are thinking negative 3 multiplied by negative 1 gives us positive 3, take note that I have left my negative sign outside brackets so it was not brought in. Uh, I am just multiplying by 3. Okay, and then finally, this gives us a value of Dun, 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 dun. 6 subtract 6 will give us 0. And we have 2 subtract 3 gives us negative 1. And then finally, 4 subtract negative 3 gives us 7. So that's 0, negative 1, negative 7. Let's rewrite our newly reduced matrix containing all of our reduced forms. So now what we are seeing is that we had 2, 1, negative 1. Then we created our second refreshed row through our row reduction process. And now we have changed to row 3. So row 3 now becomes 0, negative 1, and 7. And you can see that echelon form coming to light. Uh, we have finally uh, gotten values of only zeros below that diagonal. Now there's only one more, and that's this one here. So I'm going to try my best to convert that to uh, a zero. And if you compare these two rows, if I were to add them, I can see that I would be able to get my zero here. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Next step towards row reduction is that I am going to perform a change to row 3 in the following way. Row 3 is going to become the sum of itself and row 2. So writing that out, and I like to write it because I know some people work it in their heads, but I mean, personally, I make a lot of mistakes and it's always easier to see pen and paper than what's going on inside your head, right? So just be careful, all right? And you're going to get uh, 9 plus 7, that's 16. Okay, so we have generated a new row 3, so we are going to rewrite our matrix once more. Our last row has now become... 0, 0, 16. And we are going to rewrite our previous values that we had from before, and then our first row. 
And you can see that we're getting there. In order for this to be a perfectly reduced matrix to echelon form, we just really need this two to become a one and this 16 to become a one as well. We can do this in the same steps as I'm going to show you here. So you can actually perform more than one uh, reduction in a step. So for example, I am going to change my row, row, row one, <laughs> tongue twister there guys, and I am going to find half of row one as my reduced form as well. I'm going to try to change my row three such that I find one sixteenth of row three. Now performing both of these, half of my original row one will become one and we're going to get a fraction here, but that's okay. And then negative one half. Similarly, uh, one sixteenth of row three uh, is going to give us zero, zero, and then finally one. So what we're going to do is simply rewrite all of our new rows, we have gotten a new row one, so we rewrite it as what it is. That's actually a half. Okay, so we have a half here and negative one half. And then do we have a, no, a new row two? No, our row two has remained the same. So it was zero, one, and nine. And we do have a new row three, so we are going to write what we newly generated. And finally, guys, you can see that your leading diagonal values are now ones, and also your values below your diagonal are all zeros, which are essentially the two main conditions for something to be reduced to echelon form. So we have achieved echelon form so that you simply state after row reduction, our matrix A has become, and that's the following in echelon form. Okay, so pretty much that's it. I think the most difficult thing uh, to do when you are reducing uh, tends to be uh, which types of operations you need to perform, which rows you should add together, should you multiply a row by a particular constant, uh, you know, so just practice some examples and you will get much better at it. And I would strongly advise using your fully written, <laughs> fully written on pen to paper when you are doing your calculations instead of trying to work it in your head where errors happen easily. I wish you guys all the best. It's really a fun thing you guys can go, uh, you know, practice with some of your friends to see who can really reduce the fastest. I don't know, it's, it could be fun, you know, it could be a fun game on a Friday night, woo! Yeah, guys, but um, just um, I wish you guys all the best and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in my next video when we will also be looking at um, finding the inverse of a matrix using row reduction. So look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye.